So, Brian, thanks for coming tonight. We just had a little board meeting here with some of our graduates. And, Brian, you did our program when? Uh, February 2006. 2006, that's a long time ago. Here yeah. we are in, what is this? This is uh, July 2011, so what is that? Five years ago, you know, a bit more. And your history, Brian, what, 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 you started in the trucking as a trucking dealer, a dealership? Yeah, I've been a licensed motor vehicle dealer. Uh, for 38 years, uh, s selling heavy-duty trucks. Uh, what price range are these heavy-duty trucks? Uh, 100 to 150 thousand dollars used trucks, road train, 120 ton. Right. So all the all the biggest ones are right. available. Yeah. And over those years, how has it been? You've had your good years and your bad years, I guess. Uh, good years, bad years. Uh, trucking can be a pretty hard sort of a business with uh, low profit for the operators and low profit for the operators means I guess they're always screwing the uh, poor old dealer for the for the retail price. Sure, well the truck drivers have been screwed too by the suppliers and the delivery people so it's a big, a very difficult business. Anyway, um, you decided to look at some different possibilities and uh, I think you're a great success story in what you've done because you went for a specific market in a specific area you're inspired to, to work with in our mining boom and five years ago you started buying some properties up at uh, Mount Isa. Yeah, what I wanted to do, I, I wrote a goal that I wouldn't accept anything less than 10% yield and I never broke that goal. Uh, I went up to Mount Isa and I bought 14 properties in the first year. Uh, I went up uh, the first day and I, in the first day I bought four. I came back and settled those in uh, two months and I went straight back and bought another four. I got those revalued and uh, six months later I went and bought another eight. <laughs> or another six, yeah, I had 14 altogether the wow. first year. Now, these properties showing 10% and that's your rule and you're borrowing money in those days, what rate? Uh, about 7.5%. Okay, so they're all positively geared, bang, straight away, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. And we're going up at about 25% uh, a year, at 20, between 25 and 40%, uh, depending on the type of house. So once you had this little recipe, if you like, or this routine going, even the bank's got to be involved because they could see you're making money, they're safe, they've got a security, the properties are going up in value, you've got the mining people paying for the rents, and they're paying, what sort of rents were you getting in those days? Uh, started off uh, when I first started, uh, it was uh, 130, 260. Uh, when I ended, they were uh, about uh, 300, 600. A week rentals. Yeah. And what sort of what property values we did you start in Mount Isa to when you finished with Mount Isa? Uh, they started off at about 130, and they finished up at about uh, 350. So 130,000 little houses. Mm that went to 350 houses, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's a substantial rise, isn't it? Absolutely. Because the rental's showing up accordingly and you're you're selling to someone else. Now you moved from Mount Isa and you went to? I uh, went to a place called uh, Dysart in Queensland. That's postcode 4745. Uh, the reason being the people were leaving my houses in Mount Isa and going to Dysart. Uh, the reason was that they were getting double the wages, so going from underground mines to above ground mines. Uh, so I looked at that, and the houses in Dysart were the same price, around that 300, 350,000, uh, but were getting double the rents. Wow. Now, <coughs> and how many houses did you buy in Dysart? <laughs> well, I've bought, uh, altogether, I've bought 50 houses in the last five years. My goodness, that's like 10 a year. So that's fabulous, and uh, you know, an average price. Um, these houses that now kind of work like around the five hundred thousand dollar mark. So uh, there's twenty five million dollars worth of property, but you've now currently got how much in property? I'm holding seventeen at the moment, um, mostly five bedroom, and they're bringing in two thousand a week. I've just bought one today for six bedroom and we're asking 3000 a week for it. Wow. So, uh, and would I be right in saying these are roughly half a million dollar houses approximately? Would that be like about $8 million worth of property? Yes. And um, 
they're showing 10, 15, 20% returns? Uh, at, the, at the moment, um, my lowest is 15 and my highest is 30%. I'm buying at 20% yield right now, so 500,000, 2,000 a week. Wow. And who's paying the rents? Uh, they're all uh, multi-billion dollar companies, multinational companies, uh, the main one being BHP. Uh, they're making $23 billion profit this year. They have uh, $10 billion in the bank. So I guess they can afford to pay. And they are. So how does it make you feel doing this? I'm just curious. I mean... Well, it's, it's better than it's selling trucks, that's what I'd probably get to. Absolutely, and it's so easy because they're, they're signing two and three year leases, so that takes the risk out of it for me. Wow. And um, it's just easy, the money just flows in and uh, nothing to do really. And um, you were saying, I think in the boardroom here, that they're actually even paying you in advance. Absolutely. BHP at the moment have paid uh, one of my houses up until January. There's several there till October. So okay. three, four, six months in advance. I guess they're trying to get rid of their tax bill as well. Mm, and it's coming into your po pocket. Absol absolutely. And it's sort of stuffing my tax bill up a bit now, so I have to be careful how I handle that. So you, you've got a little process here where you... Um, Borrow from a bank maybe up to $2 million worth of borrowings before they get a bit thing about borrowing because they like you like to spread your risk and also you don't like them to have this cross collateralization securitization thing. I have no houses cross collateralized yeah. and I won't give a uh, bank a fixed and floating charge and I have no overdraft mm. and I keep everything separate. That's great. Well, as I said tonight, you're an inspiration. I asked Brian, his mind, just having a little talk here about what's going, what he's been doing. And uh, it's a very special niche and you're doing it very, very wisely and you're a smart man. And uh, after trading trucks and stuff, you're very clear about that and you, you understand what a deal looks like and you have your terms and conditions and that's it. I remember once you told me, we went to Egypt together, right. or a whole team, we went to Egypt a few years back and uh, down the Nile and we had a conference there and we looked at the tombs and everything and Brian flew in first class, which he does, and... Uh, he, uh, he's actually looking at an island in Abu Dhabi, <laughs> and that was like $100 million. And he was seriously looking at this thing. And thank goodness he didn't buy that one, but that's another story. Yes. But your mind is such that you, you see things differently to a lot of other people. Sure. While, uh, while people were uh, shopping duty-free there, I was out trying to buy land. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, people were buying these little trinkets, and you're actually looking at some substantial things. Um, if you could... Uh, uh, say to say there. I remember at that time you you were you said that you. I think you flew into one place and and in one day you. How many houses did you look at? You had all the the agents lined up to show you these houses because you didn't have time. You said let's get going. Sure. Well, I had. Uh, I was still at that stage running uh, my licensed motor vehicle dealer uh, dealership, and I didn't have time. The plane went in at uh, twelve o'clock. Went out the next day at twelve o'clock. One flight a day. So I said to the agent, uh, how many houses are on the market? And he said, 50. Uh, I said, fine. Just I said, uh, set the whole lot up uh, in five hours and uh, we'll look at everyone and you'll have the biggest uh, sales day you've ever had. So and he said, you can't possibly look at them in that time. I said, you just watch me. So 50 houses in... In five hours, that's ten houses an hour. So you're looking at houses in six minutes. You're going in, boom, boom, yeah, yeah, and, and, and out you go, and that's it, right? Absolutely. And what did you do on that day? How, you, how many houses did you buy? I bought uh, five that day. From uh, midday, the plane got in. At five o'clock, I was in the hotel. I'd already bought five. The next morning, I got up and bought another three. And so eight houses, wow. Yeah, so on the way to the plane the next day, my solicitor was standing there with all the contracts held out, and I just went... <laughs> <laughs> on the the agent must have, must have thought he won the lottery. He did. I said, how many houses have you ever sold in a day before? He said, one. <laughs> so there's a history. There's a but he was very reluctant to show me 50 houses. Mm. So I said to him, what did you learn from that? He said, well, it's a percentage thing. The more <laughs> I show, the more I sell. What, a, what, a, what an insight. Amazing, amazing. So, and you also shared that there's an education like that that has to happen. You've been educating your financiers, your lawyers. Just talk about what you've had to do? Well, what happens with agents, um, they are working on a commission and 
the one thing they want to do is get a commission into their pocket as fast as possible. Correct. Number one. Number two, they don't, they're not, they don't think entrepreneurially like I do. So in the end with agents, what I've done is I've just um, gone round them. So now I, buy, I have such a reputation up there that people call me direct before they, kill the, uh, before they call the agent and we just cut a deal and away we go. Well done. So over this time, what do you, what do you reckon you've learned? If you were like some people watching this and they say, wow, what an inspiration. You heard people come to you straight after this in the boardroom and they just wanted to talk to you, just wanted to, this is real, you know. And uh, obviously I've known you long enough and it is real. But if you were to give, say, three tips, what would you say? Uh, number one would be massive action. Mm. Absolute massive action. Mm, you have to get tip. the snowball rolling and it takes huge leverage to make a start. Yeah. So you have to take massive, massive action right at the start. Perfect. No procrastination. Yeah. You have to really go at it at 100 mile an hour right at the start to get it going. Perfect. What would be the number two? Uh, follow through. Yes, you have to so follow you... through and focus. Yeah. Absolute 100% focus. You're a goals, goal setter, aren't you? You're a very Absolutely. Good, yeah. My goals are up there. They're written. They're one inch high in colour. They're, uh, beside, they're, beside my, they're on photographic paper. They're beside my bed. I read them before I go to bed f for 15 minutes before I go to sleep. So it's in my subconscious overnight. When I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do is look at those goals again. They're absolutely in my brain all day, and I'm never, ever lose my focus. Well done. That's amazing. Because a lot of people talk about goals. They yeah, yeah, I do my goal card, you know, but to have them one inch high and have it around your bed and all yeah, the stuff. They're in, they're in colour. They're on my computer. They're on my whiteboard, which is 10 feet in front of my desk. I'm looking at them every single day, every single minute. They're imprinted in my brain, and I couldn't possibly ever forget them. Now, I've not asked you this question, but how much time are you working now? You know, you, know, you used to work with the trucking business. You were flat out. In yeah. the old days, what did you used to do? What was a day for you? Uh, in the old days, it was uh, up at 6 o'clock, uh, at work by 7, probably home by 7 at night. Yeah, so 12-hour days and, yeah. and more. Mm. And uh, how many days a week were you doing that? Uh, six days a week. Wow. So you were a real... <laughs> Hard worker, yeah? Yeah. And what would you do now? What would be a typical day for, for Brian or a uh, week? Really all I have to do now is titivate. Mm -hmm. So I've got a manager that manages all the properties and I just manage the manager. Okay, that's a good plan. So they make sure a, the rent comes in and the things. Yeah, in. They, she collects all the rent. The, I, I, there's another way of training an agent. When I started there, the... The system was they paid you monthly, mm -hmm. but all of a sudden they had hundreds of thousands of dollars of my money in their trust account. Exactly. I said, this can't continue. You like it fortnightly or so, something? Yeah, so they wouldn't change, so I said, I interviewed all the agents and I said, who wants to pay me fortnightly? Uh, I found one that would pay me fortnightly, trained them to do that, and then I trained them that well, they decided, this is a good idea, we've now got all our clients on two weekly, now we're not fighting all day on a Thursday to pay everyone. This is so good now, it only takes us half a day. I said, now wouldn't it be interesting if you paid weekly? <laughs> How much pressure would that take off you? And I'd have hundreds of thousands in my bank account instead of sitting in your trust account. And very happy clients, I mean the banks are happy having it in the trust account because they don't, you know, all that stuff. Now that agent thanks me every week. Wow. Don't have all that time. The money just flows nicely every week into my bank account, and I just sit back and say thank you. Because when you've got eight million dollars worth of property, roughly, and you're getting ten, fifteen, twenty, and thirty percent, even at ten percent, like that's you know, it is a, a million dollars. So you're getting two two million dollars a year coming in. So you know, if you did it, uh, let's call it two two point four to make my math easy. Basically, that is um, about two hundred thousand every month, isn't it? There's a lot of money sitting in, yeah, in that trust, trust account. account. Yeah. And sometimes when they pay, BHP can surprise me. And sometimes, pay in advance. yeah, they'll pay three or four months in advance, times however many houses, mm. it might be half a dozen houses, all of a sudden there's hundreds of thousands sitting in there. 
because it's really fifty thousand a, a, a week. You know, like it, it's that's a lot of money. People work a whole year for for fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. So what's it like? What's it feel like doing this? Does it feel good? It's absolutely fantastic. <laughs> it's it's a great feeling, I can tell you. That's good. Compared to where I was five years ago, mm. it's just unbelievable. Mm. Changed my whole life. Sure. So. Pushing out ahead, next five years, what do you see the future? If you were to give people some tips, I mean, you, you're very focused. Um, personally, what, what, what tip would you give someone uh, looking at the future? What do you see the future like for you? Well, a couple of people stood up there and asked me before. They said, uh, is it too late? Mm. Uh, one lady said to me, I'm too old. <laughs> I said, did you look at how old I am? And how old are you? I'm 61. There you go. She said to me, I'm 61. I said, so what's the problem? Exactly. Just from some procrastination, I think. For procrastination. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so there is no barrier. It's never too late. All you have to do is take action. A deal of a lifetime every two weeks, a deal, a, a deal of uh, the century every 14 days. I would have at least five deals come across my desk every day that would have a, at a minimum of a hundred grand profit sitting in them just waiting to be done. Wow. So you're very picky on what you do because you don't Absolutely. run in. You, you're, you're now in a position where you can choose not to do certain things and what you do makes, it's got to be very good. If there's not 120,000 profit in the deal I don't even start with it. There you go. Right at the start. I've got to be able to buy that much under market or I'm mm. not interested. Sure. And in this market, there's a lot of people in lots of trouble. They want to get their stuff, uh, stock cleared. Uh, banks are pushing them. There's divorces to people going bankrupt to businesses going out. And uh, it's a buyer's market. So what an opportunity. Um, what happens here is these guys earn such huge money. They're uh, starting on 180000 a year this is the miners for an 18 year old wow. so there's bank managers in Mackay bank managers and policemen quitting their ninety thousand dollar job with no experience and going out there the next day and getting hundred and eighty thousand okay. the guys that have been there 30 years are on four hundred thousand a year mm. so they're earning huge money sure so after a while all they want to do is retire and get away and then They've made that much money, they don't really care what they sell their house for. Mm, mm. Whether it's 50 or 100 grand here or there or yes. market price, it's not a huge difference thing to them. Not like in Sydney, they'll argue, argue the to the last cent. Well, some do until the bank moves on them and takes it off them. And then exactly. They're the last cent. exactly. So it's, a, it's an environment where uh, the last census uh, for Australia, you would think the richest postcode in Australia would be Watson's Bay or Point or Piper. Or something like that, yeah. Where do you think it is, Roy? Gee, what am I saying uh, Mount Isa or something? <laughs> Dysart. Dysart, my goodness. Richest postcode in Australia Holy in the doing. census. So How these guys, a lot of them, the husband and the wife, both work in the mine. Wow. How much money are they making now? So the big tax issues there for... Huge tax yeah. issues for them. Because the, the government is taxing the mining companies and then they're paying you these very high rents and they're taxing you accordingly, so they're getting a couple of bites of the cherry on the way through, aren't they? Uh, many bites, I, I think. I think the government's doing pretty well out of mining, Roy. It's good. Okay, so I'm really grateful for what you, you're spending time tonight, and I'm just thankful. If you could leave, leave them with one, one last tip. I've got the massive action, I've got the focus, I've got all that. I think uh, a lot of people I see don't believe that they can achieve and just don't take the action. Yeah, don't even get started. Don't, even if they get started a mile get off away. The, off the starting yeah. blocks. Exactly. It's so true and I, I can relate to what you're saying. I have great respect for you in this because I've seen people who have lots of information and then it's just that fear that gets them to procrastinate and yeah, they don't the fear, do it. The fear right here. Yeah, exactly. In the surplexes. Sure. But you just have to overcome that and step forward and take action. And last thing, what a good decision that we got together and we met you, eh? It was, Roy. Okay, I'm grateful. Absolutely fantastic. That's good. Thank you. And thanks for sharing this and thank you, everyone. He's an inspiration as far as I'm concerned. Huge respect for this man. He is a go-giver 
and he's always willing to share this with anybody. And I just appreciate you. Thanks, Brian. Thank you so much. Thank you, Roy.